All right, guys, so we uh, took a look at the minor pentatonic scale and blues scale in the A position. We're working in the key of A still. And we also showed you how you can go down here, drop it three frets down, and you have like an A major sound. This, this video I wanna focus on soloing with a combination of the major and minor pentatonic. So we're just gonna do like an A7 vamp. I recorded a quick loop, kind of a funky A7 thing. And I'm gonna show you how you can kind of mix both the major and minor to make it sound really cool and different and not just sound minor pentatonic like the standard blues scale okay so here we go Okay, so here we're doing a lot of combinations there with different things. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm doing this. Major sound, okay? The major pentatonic scale. In the second position up here, it includes these notes. The minor pentatonic is this. Major pentatonic is right here. So let's look at the uh, minor pentatonic goes like this. The major pentatonic would go like this. And you might even recognize that from some blues songs that they go. That's more of a major sounding beginning to the song because they're using these notes here, the third. And now you can go up to the minor pentatonic note right here. I'm mixing these notes. 
that's the blues note right there, that flat fifth. So you can really go like this. So that'll help you when you think about those two scales together. If you also want to play a major sound right out of this first position here, you can go like this. That's major, A, that's A major. So what I think of, and I, this is, I know I'm kind of like uh, putting a lot in this video, but I might as well just keep uh, kind of showing you some things here. And what I'm saying is, this is the first position. And so I can stay in the first position with minor pentatonic. That stuff, right? But you can go, if you if you play it like this, Sorry, if you play it like this. That's going to be a major sounding. And right here is an A chord. I'm at the uh, ninth fret and basically making this is like a D shape right here. That's the A chord. And if I hold it like this, I'm holding it like a C. So what I'm doing is starting at this A and I'm ending up at this A. I'm going. Sorry, I go like this. Here it is again, slower. So I'll incorporate this a little bit, this position here in this little jam a little bit. Let's try it again. This is major sounding. Here's the A.
pentatonic. And here's major. Same kind of shape. So the last thing I wanted to say is uh, don't overthink this stuff because when it comes down to it, you know, when you're playing in a band situation, you want the stuff to just flow out. And to get to that point, you have to just get the muscle memory built up so that you can play the phrases that you hear in your head that fit with the music and with the situation. You want to be really, really listening to the other musicians and what's happening and then be able to come up with these ideas that sort of flow out. And to get to that flow state, you have to have a lot of muscle memory and you have to have a lot of different uh, phrases and, and a vocabulary built up where you can pull out these little uh, tidbits and then you're combining them in your own cool special sauce. So um, don't overanalyze it. I mean, I saw a funny thing in a uh, Liz Reed video that I made that um, there, there were guys arguing about when I said there was a C major seven chord in that, uh, in Liz Reed, and I'm, I'm holding this chord like this, which is a C major seven, the way I was playing it, right? And they go on and on back and forth. This is from like maybe a year ago or so, I don't know, two years ago. They go back and forth and they're over analyzing, well, there's no C major seven in the key of uh, A minor, and, and technically it wouldn't be called that, it would be called an A9, and, and blah, 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 and, and back and forth going on, like he shouldn't, he should know what he's talking about. and. I, it's like, you know, really, really, I, I, I don't really care when it comes down to it. I mean, all that stuff is, 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 is okay. But when I, I think of it in terms of like street smarts versus book smarts, you might know people that are, that are book smart and can take tests and they're, and they're really awesome at taking tests and um, they have degrees and things like that. But can they actually do anything? That's the thing. Like, I want you to focus on being able to actually do it. Like, like having that street smarts to actually do it. No one's going to ask you to break down technically something after you play it with your band. They, they're, they're listening. They're there to listen and hear and, and have the emotion come across. They don't care how fluent you are in the theory and being able to explain all the different aspects of everything you played. So keep that in mind. Don't overanalyze this stuff. Um, yeah, you need to know what you're doing, and but I, I would say... As I learned, I didn't know all the theory. You learn as you go. You'll be able to start picking up more of the theory as you go, but don't start reading all the theory and say, I need to know this theory before I can apply it. Start playing, get your, get your fingers on the strings, build up that muscle memory. That's the most important thing. All right, guys, see you later.